have a problem. And that's because I had a problem with the Asp Explorer. And now I don't. The thing is, is that this is my Asp Explorer. I spent the better part of a year in this ship exploring the galaxy. I knew it inside and out, and it was a faithful companion over thousands of light years. And because I spent so long in this ship, I kind of grew to hate it. But more than anything, more than any other small nuisance, I hated the sound of it. That prop plane propeller droning noise it made, constantly. No undiscovered Earth-like planet, no black hole, no interesting find on the surface of a barren planet could shut out the noise it made. It burrowed into my soul. My ears bleed when someone mentions this ship. I was looking forward to flying it again as much as having the teeth ripped out of my head. Except this isn't that ship. This is the Asp Explorer. I think. Honestly, I can't be sure. This isn't the same ship I flew across the galaxy. It looks the same, which is to say a bit boring, but it doesn't sound the same or fly the same. And I can't seem to find any documentation on when they changed any of this. Did they change anything? Do I have space madness? Maybe. But, for all intents and purposes, that means I have a new ship to fly. So I've devised a series of rigorous testing regimes to determine realistic value of this ship in all categories any ship captain would want to know about. Except I didn't. I slapped on a hastily engineered FSD and flung myself here, to the Omega Nebula. Because it has a cool name. And I get to look at sites like this. Because, realistically, that's what this ship is for. What every die-hard, old-school, never-coming-home, screw-the-bubble, I-only-jump-ten-light-years-at-a-clip-and-do-a-detailed map of every planet and every system explorer says it's for. The same people who self-flagellate when they have any unclean thoughts about the Crate Phantom. And it's because of this. Lacon's signature glass canopy. And admittedly, they have done this right. The pilot seat is center lined with the ship, and the canopy really does provide a more open view of what you're looking at. The co pilot seat is directly underneath, so they can take in the same sights, but I have to imagine it makes conversations a bit awkward. And at some point, someone is going to wonder why they got the top bunk and why Dad likes them best. That said, I've never quite understood the fascination with having a more open view from the cockpit. While the argument could be made for a less obstructed view, it is still obstructed. And since every ship comes with an unending supply of external drone cameras, I'm not sure how anyone could make the argument that this isn't the best way to take in the sights. Still, it is the best way to sightsee with your bobbleheads. It shouldn't be a surprise that the Aspex is a prolific exploratory vessel. It's in the name, but it also sits at the top of Lacon's evolution of exploration ships. And while the DBX cannot perform it in jump range, the Asp is the ship that dedicated explorers will choose to live in. It still has a fantastic jump range, and there's no need to compromise on any of the internals. And, well, the view is better. The Aspex is more than capable of holding just about everything you need for long-distance ventures into the black. And while the ship that shall not be named might be objectively better at being an explorer, the Asp is 37 million cheaper. So even if you spend your days shoveling Rockforth fertilizer to make the big bucks, 37 million is still 37 million. That's not nothing. And when all is said and done, when you're out in the cold recesses of the void, it doesn't make a lot of difference. It's not like you're going to be showing off your ship to anybody anytime uh, soon. Huh. Well, that's just bad timing. 
Except it isn't, because there's another reason to buy an Asp Explorer. This might be the best mid-sized mining vessel you could buy. With hard points for seismic charge launchers and abrasion blasters, a size 6 cargo hold, refinery, collectors, and a prospector, you still have room left over for a shield. And if Pay Knight is more your speed, you can devote the other hard points to something with a bit more kick for uninvited guests. It has the jump range to get it to a port fast and is slippery enough to avoid interdiction. I'm sure someone out there is saying the Python or the Crate are vastly superior mining ships because they have bigger cargo holds and can stay out longer. But really, the Asp is far more nimble between the rocks than either of them. And while it does hold less cargo, personally, I don't enjoy spending hours in the fields. I think breaking up the monotony with a few more chips to the bank is well worth it. And let's not forget, those ships cost over 40 million credits more. This ship does the same thing they do. For peanuts. It's disposable. And if you don't like it, you can always do one opal run with it and go buy yourself one of the others. I wish I hadn't spent so much time in the Asp Explorer. Because I think I really like it now. It's a fun and flexible little ship sadly named after a snake. It's a cheap and effective miner an excellent explorer, and a competent fighter. And in the right light, I'd say it's even pretty. It's a good ship, and I wish I could forget all the things that made me hate her so much. Except I can't. <laughs>